You know, I could start this video out with me like washing my hands obsessively for five minutes in a row or me checking the door lock 10 times before I leave or not being able to start my day until it's on an even number because I would be easily digestible and people would understand what the heck I'm talking about, but that's just not my experience. And that's just not, that's just not the reality of it. There's nothing left and it's warm and it tastes like metal that's a tragedy these pens <laughs> these pens are so nice oh wait do you see one of those things <laughs> do i look like billy ray cyrus yes this is what billy ray cyrus would look like if he journaled in the morning my room in the morning because it's very peaceful and the sun shines through and it doesn't all day and there's usually a little patch of sunlight i usually wake up around 7 30 but today i woke up at 8 30 because last night i stayed up watching the iCarly season finale i don't regret it i got a penis parasite mm. i love iCarly i'm gonna be on season two as an extra i don't care <laughs> yeah there's too many sounds in the morning at this house this gets full. Oh my god, this is a whole workout itself. I also exclusively only wear white tube socks. You know how like every person has like their staple red lipstick, a gold necklace, and it's literally tube socks. They're from Target. I've been laying here for like half an hour. I get up. <laughs> I keep crying in intervals. <laughs> this is not a sad video. I wish I could leave my house easily and that it wouldn't be a big deal and that I could just do normal things. But it is hard. Yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to leave a long time ago, but I'm stressed out about leaving my house. Why? I don't know. I'm stressed out. Like, I don't want to be stressed out. Why am I stressed out about that? So then I mean to myself. <laughs> I just force myself to get up. I'm like, get up, bitch. It's time to get up. Get up. Come on. This brand. They sent me a tambourine as PR. Maybe this is what I need to hype me up. Let's play a silly little song. You know who I like recently? The Garden. Why? because I'm going off the deep end. I got a shag haircut, you'll probably see it later. And I listen to the garden. I'm really going off the deep end. Okay, I'm fine. I should leave now. Something about you just makes me feel guilty for. All right, bitch, let's have a serious talk. And when I say bitch, that's me talking to me, not to you. You're not bitch, I'm bitch. I can talk to my phone just fine, but as soon as I pull out a camera, I'm like, I can't, I can't like form words. I don't know what's going on. This video is not supposed to be sad. This video is not supposed to be sad. This video is not supposed to be weird also, but like now that I'm here, why am I making it weird? I'm making it weird. I'm so excited to be here. Now, I'm not excited at all. I just wanna go home. It's so dishonest if I sit here and I like talk about like how my own affects me and how like I feel and I'm like, oh, look at me, like conquering the day. Like I'm so much better after a month when I'm not like, 100% better like I, I like I'm getting frustrated over the smallest things and I'm getting such bad anxiety that my stomach hurts for no reason like I can't I can't honestly sit here and make a video it's like fraudulent it's just me being a fraud if I sit here and actually try and like pretend that like I'm better and doing everything okay when I'm not okay you know what I mean does that make yeah. sense like I yeah, can't yeah. I can't like I can't do it and I'm just like maybe I should just film tomorrow I don't want to cry on like camera but if i sit here and i'm like trying to be like on it like it doesn't make sense i just like why like why what the fuck bitch why are you crying i literally would not fucking wish <laughs> upon anyone for for what why why did i just get upset and get a stomach ache i feel like i'm gonna fucking puke for no reason just because i'm upset i have a whole list of things i want to say and i can't even say them what do i just start over tomorrow do i just start over do I just like trash my whole plan that I had and I just start over? I guess so. I'm going inside to buy myself a crystal and feel better. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't even want a crystal. I'm back. I'm done crying. I bought crystals. This one and these two. I love them.
I did want to mention that today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Thank you so much, BetterHelp, for sponsoring today's video. You guys know how highly I even talk about therapy and how much it means to me and how much it has genuinely helped me. I wouldn't have figured out all these things about myself if it were not for therapy. And I want for you guys to have that same opportunity as well. BetterHelp will help assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And you can start communicating as early as in 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. There's also a very broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's over 15,000 counselor network, which may not be locally available in many, many areas. And the service is available for clients worldwide. You can log in anytime and send a message to your counselor and you'll get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you don't have to deal with the whole waiting uncomfortably in a waiting room type of thing. BetterHelp is very, very committed to making a strong therapeutic match with you and your counselor. So if it's not working out, the process to switch over to someone new is very seamless. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is also available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit betterhelp.com slash Nicole Raffi. That's better H-E-L-P. And you can join the 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. So to all my subscribers who are watching this video and you guys really want to try it, you can go to betterhelp.com slash Nicole Raffi and you can get 10% off your first month. I hope you guys take advantage of this opportunity because therapy has helped me immensely and I really, really want that for you guys. So... Thank you so much, BetterHelp, for sponsoring today's video. Hi! I just went to hot yoga. <laughs> this is my blanket from when I was a little kid. I'm gonna put it in the back because I don't wanna be nasty. <laughs> when you last saw me, I was in the absolute worst mood possible, but like that's like not uncommon for me. I mean, I'm working on it, it's been better, but I don't wanna be like, it was a breakdown, it was a mental breakdown, it was blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. I just have this reoccurring issue where I get really, really overwhelmed and anxious and I start to feel sick over sometimes nothing, over sometimes literally nothing. I want to make this video because I think some people will actually relate to it, I hope. Well, I don't hope because it's fucking hard and terrible. You can go, you're welcome. What a nice man. I love pitying men and letting them cross the street. <laughs> I'm such a good person. Like I said, I just went to hot yoga, which was revolutionary and very fun and very nice. I love going to hot yoga. It's look at me pitying another man, letting him cross. All right, I'm such a good person. I had this whole plan yesterday of what I was gonna do for my video, which was essentially do all the things in the day that I've been doing recently during my break, showing you what I've been up to, how I've been working on myself, how I've been bettering myself as a person, how I've been healing myself mentally and physically, but having a bad day is quite normal for me. And that's exactly why I took the break, is because every single day seemed to be a bad day and started to be a not so good day. And that's not good nor normal, and normally a sign that you need to actually take a break and like sit back for a second and be like, what is going on in my life? I'm debating if I should start from the beginning or why I took a break. What do you guys want to know? Leave it in the comments down below. Some man would pay to suck the sweat out of my my hair. You know when you would get out of the shower as like a little kid and your hair was like soaking wet and then you would just suck on it? Good soup. Let's start from the beginning. Some of you guys may know that I... <laughs> I was going to therapy. I am going to therapy. I have been going. I only went to therapy in college and then I stopped and then the pandemic happened and then I just never went to one when I definitely shut off because like who doesn't fucking need therapy when their mom has cancer during a pandemic? Like, you know, people need that. <laughs> the people in my life were practically like begging me to. Like, Nicole, you're an anxious mess. You need to go to therapy. I was like, fine. You know what? I, I guess I will. And I sit down at the very first session and I have no idea what to talk about. Like, I literally was like, I, I don't even really know why I'm here to be honest and she's like doing her little evaluation and filling me out and asking me a bunch of questions and whatever and telling me that if you know if if I confess to her that I killed someone she can't do anything about it which was like good to know but like I'm not gonna do anything with that information you know nothing there was nothing for me to say to her I, I was confused why I was going I was like yeah I guess I'm anxious and she's like describe how you feel when you're anxious I'm like honestly I don't know like I genuinely don't I don't know. Then I gave it some thought and I, you know, was waiting for my next session and I was home alone for the weekend. I just had the house to myself and I was like, all right, today's a cool, deep organization day. That's what I'm going to do. And I remember this day so clearly because now I romanticize it because I have this bad habit of romanticizing really awful days. But I remember it very clearly. I watched a documentary. I needed to go to Staples. So upset, so sad, so anxious, so like confused. And I was just like, I think I need to start writing down every single time that I'm upset and like what that emotion feels like, I think I need to start writing this all down. And so that's what I did. I, I have notes app filled with what I want to talk about at my next therapy session. 
because I didn't know in the past what I needed to write down and I'm a big list maker like I have to make a list for myself every single day or else I'll just forget I take my omega-3 so that my memory is better but I still need to write everything down and I'm not gonna get deep into specifics of what my thoughts and feelings were because if anybody got a little tiny glimpse into my mind then they would be like I will spare you and I won't go into the deep depths and thoughts of my inner mind. However, as I'm like writing all these things down, I'm starting to notice a pattern about myself. And I recommend everyone does this. If you're gonna start to go to therapy or if you're considering talking to someone, make a list of like, you know, when you're having these bad days, like what are some things that are bothering you? What are some things that you're observing about yourself? As soon as I was reading the list back, I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> I'm noticing a pattern here. Up until this moment, I never could put a finger on what I was actually feeling. I genuinely didn't know. I didn't understand because I would just like shut them out because I didn't even want to listen to what I was thinking about. I come to my therapist with this long ass list of things that I compiled throughout the week. Every single time I was upset or anxious or bothered or what my thoughts were feeling. And that's when I got an evaluation and that's when I got a diagnosis and I have OCD which is obsessive compulsive disorder, um, heavily based on the O, oh, obsessive. <laughs> and I was grateful that I was even able to get a diagnosis and feeling so, you know, privileged that I was even able to go to a therapist and get an evaluation and get a diagnosis and get seen or anything. And I'm happy that I finally know what the what is up with my noggin. However, I had a strong feeling that it was gonna really, really, really take a toll on me because the one thing with having obsessive-based OCD is <laughs> that I started to obsess over the fact that I had OCD and think about every single symptom. And I told my therapist that straight up. I was like, I'm scared that if, if this comes back positive, you know, after my evaluation, I'm scared that I'm going to start imagining that I have different symptoms or that, you know, be obsessed over them. And she's like, well, the good thing is about your OCD is that you already have all the symptoms, so there's no new symptoms to imagine. So that's good to know. <laughs> I'm laughing about this now because, I mean, what is the point of me basking in it and being upset about it? I wanted to make this video to help, you know, educate people, break the stigma, I guess. Also help someone else who feels like it because I didn't know anyone with obsessive-based OCD. There was three instances in my life before where I considered that I may actually have OCD. The first instance was when I was in the eighth grade and this boy that I was talking to, because I was fucking talking to boys at like the age of 12, he told me that he had diagnosed OCD and that he would, you know, obsessively check the locks or the stove. And I was like, hmm, yeah, I, I sometimes do that, but you know, not to the extent that he does. But that's interesting, I'm gonna keep an eye on it. The second instance was when I was in college studying with my friend and I told him that my boyfriend hadn't responded to me in a while and I didn't know why and I started to get really, really worried. Not in an obsessive girlfriend, where are you type of way, but in a obsessive, oh my God, did he die type of way. And I told him, I was like, yeah, so I just Googled North Carolina State University mass shooting because I'm just making sure that that didn't happen. Or like North Carolina State bus, crash or something and my friend like looks at me and he's like nicole i have ocd and i go to an ocd specialist and i think you should go to one too because that is like a clear you know sign of ocd huh okay maybe the third time that i considered maybe i have ocd was when i went to my therapist and she suggested that maybe i go to an ocd specialist when i'm done seeing her at college which i never did because i was like no i don't have ocd because the thought of OCD that I always had in my mind was the one that everyone has in their mind. Obsessive cleaning, repetitions, associations with numbers or colors. And I have them to a certain extent, but that's not my main thing. And so I always ruled it out. I was like, I don't have that. That one video of the kid many, many years ago that went viral on YouTube who can't eat his pudding because the, the, the lid was still a little bit on the lip of the lid and he couldn't eat his pudding. Like he could not physically eat it. And that that's what I had associated in my mind. No one told me uh, the other symptoms of OCD that you just don't fucking learn about or that you just don't hear other people talking about because maybe they're just embarrassed or maybe they just don't want to talk about it. And that's exactly the point where I was at before because I was like, I'm not going to talk about my OCD on YouTube or the internet. I actually made a vow to myself a few months ago to never talk about my health on the internet ever again 
because it was getting to be too much to hear other people's input. And then the more that I sat and thought about it, I was like, I fucking wish that someone talked about it. I fucking wish that someone had talked about all the different symptoms of OCD that nobody talks about. And that's not said because I feel fucking nuts. I feel fucking crazy. I got my diagnosis and I'm literally having breakdowns every single day because I'm realizing all these things about myself that are now associated with my OCD. And I felt, I don't wanna use the word bad for myself, but I felt so sad for myself. I felt so sad that I was going through this and that I didn't do anything about it or that I didn't know where I felt like my feelings were invalid or unreal. When in reality, I had no fucking control. I had no control. And I don't wanna get too deep into it because it, part of me is scared that there's awful people on the internet who will use some of my obsessions against me, who will use some of the things that really, really fucking trigger me or make me upset against me. And I'm scared of that. So I don't want to talk about those things. And you just feel like such an outsider when this entire time you felt so in, you felt fine. You were just like, well, sometimes I just get really fucking nervous and I think about the same thing nonstop and get so worried and I can't function for the entire day from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. the next day because I'm thinking about one thing and one thing only and I can't make a decision. Or nobody tells you about when you go to the grocery store and you're standing in the same aisle for an hour and 30 minutes because you can't fucking pick out which product to get because you need to read the best reviews on every single product because if you don't get the right product, then something bad will happen to you. And nobody th talks about having consistent, really, really traumatic, gory, really, really vivid nightmares every single night for months on end because you can't control your thoughts when you sleep. And no one talks about not being able to get over really, really traumatic events that affected you so deeply when you were younger and now still affect you to this day and everyone in your life tells you to get over it. So you try to get over it, but you can't because the thoughts are literally just like flashing in your head constantly. And nobody fucking talks about how having such awful vivid memories that I have to audibly scream to get that thought out of my brain. I have to audibly scream or cringe to get that thought until you realize that all day that's all you've been doing. All day, you've just been screaming because you can't get these thoughts out of your head. And no one fucking talks about going to the gym and feeling like you can't go in because something bad is gonna happen to you and that something's deeply wrong and that something deeply is off about you and that everyone fucking hates you, that everyone hates you. Having this all or nothing mentality and this cognitive distortion that everyone fucking hates you and that everyone has an issue with you and you can't stop thinking about it. So you just cry and go to a crystal store and fucking go home. I don't even want a crystal. <laughs> and, and me saying nobody talks about it. People do talk about it. Some people do talk about it, of course. But I would hope that a normal fucking person on the internet like me or like a YouTuber would hopefully make one person who is watching feel better that they aren't alone. And people all the time, I have OCD too. I fucking keep my room clean, pristine. I, I have OCD too. I always have to use hand sanitizer when I get in the car. I have OCD too. Like, look, I, I can't function normally if my jeans aren't cuffed the, the same length. Fuck you. But no, no, well, okay. I used to not get upset about that. I used to get upset when people get upset about something like that. I'd be like, who cares? Who cares if someone is misinformed on what OCD is? Who cares? Until it affects the perception of how others start to see you. And it was tough telling those around me that I have OCD and I wanted to tell people. I wanted to tell my close friends. I wanted to tell my family. I wanted to tell people in my life that I have it because that's important to have a support system. It's so important. And almost everyone was supportive. Almost everyone was understanding and wanted to learn more about it. And then some people already had their preconceived notions on what it was. And I was told that explains why you can't get over things easily. They didn't mean it in an offensive way. It definitely it felt like a little stab in the heart, but I've learned so much about myself and I'm so grateful. And I feel like a completely different person than I was two months ago when I didn't know what was wrong with me, when I didn't know what was going on inside my brain, when I didn't know tools to help me. And I also feel completely different because the things did get worse before they started to get better. Now you know a little bit something more about me. And I know a little bit something more about myself too. <laughs> anyway, that's the diagnosis. Howie Mandel has OCD. I always thought Howie Mandel was really sexy when I was little and I would watch Deal or No Deal, so. I just had a great day. It's not extremely often that I have great days. I have I have a lot of good days, like don't get me wrong. Like a lot of days are like, oh, I feel fine. And like, I've been journaling a lot recently, which is something that I'll get into later in the video, but like journaling has helped. And one of the prompts that I have to write about is like, what would make today great? And like my standards are pretty low as to what would make a day great. Like I don't, 
need that much even though my expectations of myself are pretty high but like it doesn't take a lot for me to have like a great day or anything and my anxiety has been like low and I think a lot of that has to do with like how I start my days like morning times is the worst for my anxiety if I don't start my days very very like promptly and like with purpose and everything then it's just like all downhill from there and just filled with guilt I noticed Which sucks because I'm not like that big of a morning person, but I have I have to be I literally have to be now I wanted to kind of talk about why I took a break like off of YouTube and in general I actually took a very big break from life <laughs> I don't know if anyone has noticed and I will totally not be offended actually quite relieved if you didn't notice But I've been gone off of YouTube for the last one month and it all started when I was doing something that I still can't talk about yet Maybe by the time this video is out, I don't know. Essentially, I had to quarantine in a different state for a few days and I had a therapy session while I was quarantining and I got to like video chat and stuff and my friend Jake was quarantining with me so I had to like shove him out and I was like, please go into the other room and like put in your little noise canceling headphones that you always make fun of me for not having um, and don't listen to my therapy session. Thank you very much. I talked to my therapist and I was like, I really, really want to do this one thing in particular but I'm really, really scared to and embarrassed that I even want to do it. And I also feel like so immensely privileged and it just feels like such an asshole thing to do. And I just, I'm so scared to do it. And she's like, what is it? And I was like, I just want to take a month off of just like any expectations from me. Like, I don't want any expectations from me at all. Like, I just want to simply exist and live my life and get myself back into order and properly process my diagnosis and work on myself properly so that I can be a better person not only to myself but to those around me because I wasn't being the best person that I could be and that I knew I could be and I think people around me knew that I was struggling a lot like with my YouTube channel and just feeling kind of like potentially burnt out and just feeling kind of off about everything but I was just feeling off in general like I wasn't pursuing any hobbies other than just like reading to an excess to like escape my own brain essentially like I was reading like three to four books a week just because I didn't want to deal with the thoughts inside of my head. Newsflash, it worked, but not for long. And my therapist was like, why? Why can't you take a break? Like, what is actually stopping you? And I was like, well, everyone tells you that if you take a break from YouTube, then your like career is essentially over and it's a bad thing to do. And it just is bad. Like you just shouldn't do it. And then the algorithm will hurt me and then I'll come back and I'll be upset and it'll just be this really awful cycle. So I might as well just keep pushing through even though I'm not at the happiest point possible. The answer did not make me make sense at all. And I felt like such a fucking hypocrite because I was sitting here making these videos about how to be the most confident person and how to stop hating yourself. Yeah, I hated myself more than anything and I was not confident in myself at all because I felt like I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do them and I'm like preaching empowerment and how to stand up for yourself and I couldn't do that for my own self I couldn't stand up to myself and I've taken a lot of like smaller breaks like I took a break like earlier on in the summer I would go and touch grass and I would go on hikes but I wouldn't like think about my feelings or what I was actually thinking I was just actually pushing them out and avoiding them because I didn't even want to um, make sense of what my brain was going through. Taking these silly small breaks, like these one week breaks, it's like, it's like cleaning a bathroom, okay? It's like, imagine you have a filthy ass bathroom and then once every few weeks you decide that you're gonna clean like one part of each bathroom. Like you're gonna clean the sink one day and then a few weeks later you're gonna clean the toilet and then a few weeks later you're gonna clean the shower. Um, at the end of it all, your bathroom's still gonna be filthy. Like it doesn't matter, your bathroom is still fucking disgusting. Why did I choose this comparison? In a few months, snowballing, you kind of realize maybe you should just clean the whole bathroom all at once. Like maybe you would have been much better off if you had dedicated a lot more time to cleaning the bathroom and really just deep cleaning it. And then maybe you would have been better off. And guess what? The bathroom is still gonna get dirty. Why are people lighting fireworks? It's literally August 28th. And guess what? The bathroom still gets dirty. That's the reality of owning a bathroom, is that your bathroom's gonna get dirty. If you didn't already catch on, the bathroom is your brain. The bathroom's gonna get dirty. And that's okay. That's why we regularly clean our bathrooms. And that's why we go to the store and we buy toilet bowl cleaner and we buy bleach and we buy Windex to go clean our bathroom. And then we actually dedicate the time to cleaning the bathroom. But what isn't helpful is buying the Windex one month and then the next month cleaning the toilet and then the next month cleaning the sink. Your bathroom's fucking filthy, like it just is. So you should have just sat down and deep cleaned the bathroom and then regularly kept up with it every single week after that. 
but that's not what I was doing. My bathroom was filthy. And that's when, you know, I went back to therapy and I was like, I want to take a break, but not for the reason of just escaping reality, but with the intention of actually working on myself. I really, really, really want to take off to simply just focus on my mental health, focus on my well-being, focus on my physical health because my physical health started taking a toll. Seeing my body actually physically react to stress was kind of crazy because it's been happening my whole life, but I just wasn't paying enough mind to it. Like I just would come up with a different excuse for it or I wouldn't know what was up or I don't think my doctors knew how bad it was because I didn't have like a diagnosis. Like all that there was was like just anxiety. I made the decision with my manager and my therapist and my friends and my family um, that I was gonna take about a month long break, give or take more or less kind of what I was feeling Coincidentally, at the same time as Emma Chamberlain, so I'm really falling into this trajectory of just copying Emma Chamberlain. Let's not film the process, not be like, this is my first week of not being online. Like, I just wanted to just be, just be, and do things naturally that made me happy. For the first time in like a couple years, I got back into weightlifting, I got back into hot yoga, um, which I learned is so important for the body. I started reading this book called Burnout. Um, it's all about the stress cycle, especially how women deal with it. A stress cycle um, has to run its course. If something traumatic has happened to you or something big, uh, you have to somehow move through it. A lot of times it requires crying or physical exertion or, you know, letting your body feel that thing and then letting it pass through. Burnout occurs when you just let the stress cycles build up and it can last for years. You could just have stress cycles that are never completed um, and are just like stagnant and then your body's re responding negatively to it and then you're feeling sick and then problems arise, so on and so forth. And I realized that a lot of things have happened in my life, especially like within the last year and a half uh, that I never completed the stress cycle. And one of the main things that I was telling everyone was that I feel like I have nothing positive to contribute to society at all anymore. I feel like I've said everything I've ever wanted to say and I've done everything I've ever wanted to do. I can't imagine possibly putting out anything into this entire world that is of value anymore. And it made me not wanna make videos anymore either because I was like, there's nothing that I could make at this point that I would be proud of because I don't think that a single person would benefit off of anything that I make ever. Number three in this book <laughs> as a sign of burnout is decreased sense of accomplishment, an unconquerable sense of futility, feeling that nothing you do makes any difference. And I was saying that I felt this way before even reading this book, and then I read this book and I was like, fuck, this is how I feel. And I thought I was in the process of burnout, but turns out I was truly just burnt out. And that's not just about YouTube. I was just burnt out from life, just in general. You know, I went into the whole idea of, of the break and I didn't have any strong sense or idea of how I would, you know, make myself get better. Like I didn't have a plan. No one laid out an entire like spreadsheet for me on how to get better. I just really tried to be in tune with myself and my body and my brain as best as possible and try to figure out what was best for me. And I was like, okay, bitch, what makes you happy? All right, I know physical activity makes me happy. So I started going to the gym again and I started going to hot yoga again. I started going on hikes again. And doing those three things is like now not like a non-negotiable thing. I have to do those things at least once a day, multiple times a week, or else I will not be the happiest that I can be. I know that helps me. I started journaling, which helped me so much. I knew it helped me years ago, but now I actually do it. It's so annoying. When the things that your family and your doctor and your therapist and everyone online will tell you will make you feel better, when it actually makes you feel better, that's so frustrating because you're like, oh, you're right. I do feel good. I hate it. Meditation helps me immensely. I got the little Headspace app and I do my little meditations and at the end I'm like, God damn it, I feel better. Sleeping, sleeping normally, going to bed early. Oh my God, 11, 11, make a wish. It's like, I should be sleeping by now when I will soon, I pinky promise. But going to bed early helps me so much. So, so, so much. Reading instead of being on my phone or on TikTok. Oh my God, it actually helps me. Physical activity that I love and that I don't hate. Like I don't force myself to run, I hate running. And I'm not saying that these things will help you because everyone is so different. But if you're in a state of burnout or maybe you're also struggling with OCD and you're struggling with deep anxiety I say try to do the things that your body is asking you to do and you'll probably feel it if you Look inward and you ask yourself buddy. What makes me feel good? And then you do it and then you realize you feel good continue doing it for a long time and you'll set a habit and then Look at that You're working on your problems. 
the thing with OCD is that it is a anxiety disorder. And so with it being an anxiety disorder, it was really, really difficult for me to know that I had OCD because I, I read a little bit about it and I'd be like, I can see myself fitting some of these categories and I see myself having some of these tendencies, but because some of these like other symptoms are not as talked about or not as prevalent in a lot of people, it's hard to get a diagnosis. It's hard to get a diagnosis in general in America. It's hard to go to a fucking doctor. I'm about to lose my insurance like next month. <laughs> I'm getting medicated for my OCD soon because it's just genuinely affecting me that bad and I want to get better. I want to get better for myself and I want to get better for those around me and I deserve it and future me deserves it and past me deserves it and present me deserves it. And you know how I was kind of earlier talking about how I felt like I had nothing positive to contribute to society anymore, like I had nothing left to say and nothing left to do. Um, it feels great to finally make something that I feel like does have a positive effect on society because I hope that there's one person watching this who feels alone with their obsessive based OCD and is struggling with it and doesn't, you know, talk about it or isn't able to tell their friends or family because they're so embarrassed and ashamed and filled with guilt for having the thoughts that they do or feeling the way that they feel or acting the way that they act. And I hope that someone can feel a little bit less alone. And you know, I think a lot of people will say, you know, it's so cool to talk about mental health. Let's destigmatize mental health. But as soon as someone has something outside of anxiety or depression, then people are demonized. Bless you. People are demonized. People are, you know, looked down upon for their other mental illnesses if it's not anxiety or depression. And I have no intention of becoming like an OCD channel or talking about it super duper often because it is a personal thing. And like I said, like some of the things that I experience, I don't think I'll ever be comfortable sharing on the internet. This could be my last ever video where I talk about OCD or maybe I make more videos about it so that people can understand better. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about any of that yet. I remember telling a friend that I had it. They were like, Nicole, there's no fucking way that you have it. There's absolutely no way. Like you don't do any of the compulsive things. I've never seen you act like you have OCD. And that's the thing about it is that, the, first of all, thank you so much for telling me I hide it well. Second of all, I don't talk about what goes on inside my head. This is the most I've ever talked about my OCD outside of with my therapist at all. There's not much more to say. There's like not genuinely much more to say. I don't have like this big ending. And you know, the whole video was like, I had this whole idea playing in my head and I was getting so upset about it yesterday morning because I was like, it needs to be perfect. It needs to be so perfect. And I have this vision in my head and I'm so scared of disappointing myself. And I don't want to disappoint myself. I'm really, really scared that if I disappoint myself, something really bad is going to happen and, and it's, I'm going to disappoint people and it, people are going to be upset with me. And like, this, this is supposed to be my video back. Like, how could I disappoint people? And this whole video was supposed to be me going through my like perfect day, like how I've taken a break and how much I've healed and helped myself. And and I'm happy that yeah, my day didn't go as planned yesterday because it shows the fucking reality of like what days are like when I'm like that. It shows the reality that I'm getting better, but I'm not healed. Oh my God, no. Like I'm not better for my OCD. I'm not completely 100% better for my burnout break. I'm not 100% anything. I Nobody's 100% anything, but I'm working on it. And I think that's the most important thing is that before I gave up on myself and that's how I ruined my life. I completely gave up on myself and I let everything consume me. I allowed myself to wallow in my obsessive thoughts and think this is the way that things are gonna be for the rest of my life and they're never gonna get better and I'm going to have to live with feeling like a piece of shit and guilty and shameful and awful forever and ever and ever until the day I die and there's nothing I can do about it. And the day that I decided to fix that and the day that I decided I need to take a break to better myself and the day that I decided that I need to do things that make me happy and fuel me and make me better and the day that I decided I am gonna make an appointment to go see a psychiatrist and get medicated and the day that I truly accepted that I need help is, excuse me, when I stopped believing that I ruined my own life because I didn't. I'm working on getting it better, but I was on track to just letting it deteriorate and yeah, and I'm really, really grateful that I had a bad day yesterday. I really am. Yeah, it sucks I didn't get to film what I wanted to yesterday, but it shows the reality of it. it. It's not good a lot of the time. It's really not good, and I have a lot of anxiety, and I will break down and cry and feel like a terrible person. And that wasn't even, like, the worst of it. That was a pretty mild version of that. And I'm really grateful for those days because today I had an amazing day, and it makes me a whole lot more grateful for those days because it makes me feel like I am capable 
of, of being good and being normal and, and feeling great and not being completely clouded by my obsessive thoughts. It just is taking a lot of work. <laughs> the good news is, is I think that I got my outro song back, so.